I'm Courtney O'Connor, and I teach at Washington High School. And um, I teach using that flip quad sword method, which, uh, by the way, I really hate people call it that because it sounds so like super trendy, like it's gonna go away in five minutes. But I don't think it's gonna go away in five minutes. I think it's kind of here to stay. So um, I try to make this kind of thing as, as interactive as possible. So if you have a phone or a tablet or a laptop or whatever, um, if you want to go to this website, did I have, can everybody see that? We need to turn off some lights. This is... Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> just like the kid. So if you have a phone or a tablet or a laptop, go to this website. This website is called Padlet, and it is kind of a cool way for kids and teachers to, um, to like create like a little discussion board or to create. Um, just a, a kind of a free-for-all thing that kids can do just to, you know, they don't want to talk in front of everybody. They don't want to express their opinions. This is kind of a way for them to sort of anonymously do this. Mm. You can put, like, GIFs and pictures and stuff in it, so they'll go a little crazy once they realize that they can do that. Um, while you're going there, uh, I teach math. I teach pre-calc and geometry concepts, which is our level three geometry students. And then um, computer programming. My computer programming kids really like Padlets because they, well, they like to put a bunch of secret stuff in there. So let me go to the Padlet. do a Padlet, you just double click on the screen and you type whatever you want. So like my name is Courtney and I want to know what you want to get out of the session. So I don't see a lot of people with phones in here because you guys are really polite and you didn't bring your phone to the class and that's okay. Um, but if you have one and you're there, you can go ahead and type what you want. But I really want to hear this what you want to do. Like I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to sit here and blab on and on and on about how to make a movie. If you don't really want to know. If you, I don't want to sit here and blab on and on and on about all the ticked off parents that I've encountered because I do this. If you don't want to hear about that, although the stories are kind of funny. Um, <laughs> our English teachers really like, or what group is this again? We have English people? Science. Oh, well then you're my kind of people. All this hippie stuff you guys don't like. Just like this. Your art? Okay. Well then you might like this. Um, so any kid can just click on this and uh, and type whatever they want. Now, they can type bad things. They will type bad things because you know how they are. But so let's just tell me what you want to know. Anything. You've taught both ways. You've taught flipping the classroom. You've taught the traditional way. Yes. Okay. What has been the best major? <laughs> how has this been better or made you a better teacher than the old traditional way? I think that this is great because of the time factor. In Washington, we only have 50 minute class periods. And I came from a district where we had like block days every other day and that kind of stuff. So I went from having 90 minutes to 50 minutes. And before I was rushing, 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 going over homework, going through the lesson, not finishing it, having to go over the next day and getting behind and behind and behind, especially for my honors kids. So when I started this, the time that opened up for me in class for the kids to have discussions and for the kids to ask each other questions and ask me questions has been phenomenal. Like, I never would have had that if I taught for 50 minutes. So this is an extension of your class time where they do this on their own. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> so. Hmm. So how, how much time does it take a student to watch your clips the videos, uh, I make them under 10 minutes typically because I tried originally to make it like the whole class, like me and my entire lecture. And then that first video turned out to be like 35 minutes long and that didn't go over too well with the, uh, with the audience. 
the, uh, so I kind of revamped that and decided if we can do 10 minutes at home of pre-class instruction, where it's basic maybe vocabulary and stuff maybe they already know, and the introduction to this crazy complicated topic that we're going to do today. When they come to class, they are more prepared to absorb that kind of information. I don't have to spend 15 minutes waiting for kids to copy down vocab definitions. Can you get 100% participation? Oh, no. <laughs> there is no way I ever get 100% participation. Um, How do you deal with that? Well, there's a lot of different ways that I have combated that. Recently, I have decided that I just check their notes every day. Like, they're supposed to watch the video and take notes over it. And every day I'm going to check their notes while they're checking their homework answers on the board or whatever. I check their notes to make sure that they watch the video. And yes, they could cheat and copy their notes off somebody else, but at least they're writing them down. And that's kind of my philosophy. If they don't, I threaten to call their parents and give them detentions and write them up and all that stuff. And I haven't yet had to get to that point where I actually had to write somebody up and had to, had to uh, call their parents. But they, but the kids kind of respond to it. They hate it, but at the same time, they realize that it's good for them, which is a nice self-awareness that maybe they didn't necessarily have before. Um, so I kind of made this little thing, but since most of us don't have phones, it might not be as fun. This is called Kahoot. We, um, Kahoot is like an online little quiz thing that you can make, and they're really easy, they're really fast. Um, and kids can use their phones or their tablets or their laptops to do the Kahoot. So if you have a phone or a laptop, go to the website. Takes it a second. Go to the website kahoot.it. And you're going to type in that number, that game pin, 659 or 695. The kids really like Kahoot's. How do you get there? Kahoot.it, the website's right here at the top. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, that's just like a discussion board for that kind of stuff. This is like a, an interactive quiz. So we got Cam in here, and we got TT, or no, it's a pie. This TT. Oh, it, like it looks like a pie. <laughs> so what do you mean by the one? The other one is like a discussion board. So, you know, maybe I'll make a Padlet and I'll put it up and I'll say, what were you confused about on last night's homework? And the kids will type in, you know, <laughs> everything. That's usually what they say. But uh, <laughs> but they but the kids like it because you know it's a kind of free form of expression. They don't have to talk in front of everybody. They don't have to admit they don't know how to do something because we all know that we all have problems admitting we don't. So it doesn't put their names up there. They can put their names up there. Um, you're supposed to. Usually they put in names like LeBron James and uh, Miss O'Connor. We get a lot of Miss O'Connors. <laughs> Uh, anybody else trying to get in? You can't get in. Well, you four people are just going to have so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, I made, I made six questions for my Kahoot. And the first question is, what is a flipped classroom? And it puts it on a timer. But you don't have to put it on a timer. Yeah, the questions are up here. So it's a bunch of hippie baloney that only young people do. A super cool way of teaching because you don't have to do any work. Mm -hmm. Students watch videos at home in preparation for class, and it's just a trend that's going to go away soon. Time's up. Oh, okay. Oh, Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it automatically does it. Two of you got it right. Well, I didn't put anything down. Me either. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's on a time limit, so you got to read fast. <laughs> so. TT, you're winning with 825 points. Oh, no, wait. You got to fail. No, because you know the answer to the first question. All right, true or false? Video is the only method instruction of instruction in a flipped classroom. There's only two for this one. Oops. I've for a 
<laughs> that is the problem with Kahoot. You can't go back and change it, unfortunately. Oh, no. Who got it wrong? Like, shame them. You can do that. It usually doesn't show who got it wrong. It does, like, this little scoreboard so the kids really get into it. It scores you on who answers first, and then it scores you on who gets it right. So, kids think a flipped classroom is great. Torture? Lame, but a good idea? Or all of the above? Can you adjust the time that you give them? I can. It defaults to 30 seconds. So, how do you, okay, this is, how are you going to put, like, so this is math and science and fine arts? Can you put, MP. like, touching? It's not for you, MP. I mean, there's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, how do you put like problems with taking you? Can you just cut and paste it into there? You can cut and paste it in there. It does have some problems with some math, like equation stuff that I've noticed. But um, good for vocabulary, especially. Uh, and that's what I use it, especially for my lower level kids. They like this because they get to play my problems. And I don't yell at them that much. TT, you're still in <laughs> Parents think a flipped classroom is. Worst if you lose Wi Fi connection, it does kick you off, unfortunately. Oh. The worst thing on the planet, the coolest thing is some sliced bread. Scary because they don't understand, or all of the above. Hmm. You all got it right. Good job. Neil, you're catching up. Huh. All right. What types of kids do not excel in flipped classrooms? The smart ones. The ones who struggle. The average. Or the kid who don't. Who don't. Oh, that's awful. Who doesn't <laughs> do anything. Proofreading is probably pretty good. This is the kids. Oh, the kids who don't. I guess I need to learn how to read. I don't teach English. I don't read things out loud very often. All right, flipped classrooms are great because it free up class time facilitating. You don't have to teach anyone. Mm -hmm. It makes you look really cool to your principal. Or you can become an internet star like that Khan of Khan guy. <laughs> star, not star. Khan yeah. Academy, you guys ever been to Khan Academy? All right, TT, it, it looks like you won with 5,100 points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with 5,100 cahoots. Do you have a grade for these or is this yeah. fine? You can get the answers. Now, if the kids put in, like, a goofy name, because the kids don't have to have a count to do this, which is why I like this one so much. Like, they don't have to log in with like a username and password. The only person who needs a username and password is you. But you could give them ID numbers? Yeah. And then you can take that for a grade, can you? Yeah, totally. Um, so this is what the teacher view of it looks like. It's create.kahoot.it, if you ever wanted to try it on your own. You just have to make an account, just like every other cool tech thing that you ever want to do. You have to make an account. What about? Kids do not have to have an account for Padlet either. Um, do you go to Padlet to sign up for it, or does it have a different name? That one is the same. I don't know why this one is different. And this is actually a thing that's still in beta testing, but um, I find that it works really well. This is really only like the second ever Kahoot I felt the need to save. But uh, the cool thing with Kahoot is there are tons and tons and tons of public ones that are already made that, you know, my friend across the hall who is terrible with technology wanted to try really hard to use technology, and he teaches Algebra 1, and there were like thousands of Algebra 1 cahoots. And he just picked one, and the kids did it, and loved every second of it. Now, if you use a public one, you kind of have to go through some process to save it as your own so you can get the answers out and that kind of stuff. But, um, but it's really cool, fun to play around with. Again, I'm not here to show you how to use this. But they just, they just have to get the pen, and then like they can use it. And you just use your phone, right? Yeah. And that's what most of my kids use, is their phone, because they always have that with them. They never forget that. Heaven forbid they come to class with a pencil, but they never forget their phone. What do you do with any kids that don't have? 
couple, I have a couple, our library has a couple laptops that we can just run down and steal. So if I know I'm gonna do this, I'll just run and steal a couple laptops. Or, you know, I'll just play with a friend. Most of them don't really mind doing that. Um, so I kind of already alluded to this, but I wanted to talk about, you know, how I used to work. And I started this with my pre-calc students like three years ago before our district started its digital conversion. Really because when I was in the process of interviewing for jobs, because I kind of got fired from my first job. We don't need to talk about that. That's a lunch conversation if you want to know. Um, so, so I was looking around for jobs and I went to an interview at this Catholic school with this little old nun who asked me if I knew what a flipped classroom was. And I was like, I had no idea what she's talking about. So I look stupid. Clearly I did not get that job. Because she was talking about all kinds of crazy stuff that I'm like, oh, that... Whatever, but after she asked me about it, I kind of did some research and I see I thought that it was really cool and I wanted to try it. So when they got my new job at Washington, they, I just kind of did it, didn't tell anybody I was doing it, and then this principal started getting some phone calls and I thought I was in trouble, but I wasn't. Uh, they were really, they were really liking it. So this is kind of, real quick, I'm gonna not bore you with all the math stuff, but this is what you know, my classroom used to look like. I would start class, we'd go over homework, and I'd be like, okay, today we're gonna talk about graphs of functions. We're gonna be able to graph functions by applying points, graph functions by using a calculator, <coughs> graph piecewise functions, and determine if graphs represent functions, which is a lot of things to try to do in one day. Uh -huh. But that's how my textbook was set up. And being a new person, I was freaking out. And I would move on from this slide. This is not, there we go. No, I'm not doing what I want. Is the technology good? There we go. Mm -hmm. So I would move on from the slide, and then I'd, there'd be one kid back in the back who wouldn't pay attention, like, what section number is this again? What was that vocabulary word? Can you go back? And I'm just like, yeah, sure. And, um, so we do this, and I talk about what a graph of a function is, and I, you know, do all kinds of cool little activities, and then we move on. And we would try to do some stuff with plotting points, and I would be up here writing, and they would be scrolling down things as fast as they could to try to keep up with me, because we only got 50 minutes, and we're going and going and going. And then we get out our graphing calculators, and lo and behold, somebody's graphing calculator doesn't work. So I'd be over here trying to help somebody with their graphing calculator, and then 20 minutes have gone by. I really haven't taught anything important yet. And then I get to piecewise functions, and holy cow, our brain explodes when piecewise functions happen. And so that took another 20 minutes. So now I'm 40 minutes into class, and I got 10 minutes left, and I haven't covered anything. And so we don't have a homework assignment tonight because I didn't get through what we need to get through in class. And so now I'm a half a day behind. And that's what was really frustrating to me is I had very inquisitive, whoops, sorry. I have very inquisitive kids who were asking me really good questions, but I wasn't able to give them the kind of attention that I wanted. So I started recording myself. And I can show you. I post all mine up on YouTube, because I feel like that's just kind of the easiest thing to do. Because all the kids know how to get to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So can anybody in the whole world go to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if they weren't, like this is the one they had to watch tonight. I think you can set up your channel as like private or something. You can set it to be private it and- It be a public channel. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm not really. If somebody on YouTube, I'm sure I already am. There's, there's nobody yeah. going around watching math. Math. <laughs> you would be surprised if some people are out there. What weirdos are out there? Do I have speakers? Speakers. That's extra. That's extra. Oh wait, I'm muted. Oh, so you don't have to have your face. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I'm trying. 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 I
on the coordinate plane. <coughs> there are many ways that you can create a graph of a function. The simplest way I try to is talk to plot point. We will learn about other ways to graph later. But for now, we're going to focus on point plotting. So if I had this particular function, how long is this going to have to work? Work? Eight minutes. You might already know what it looks like. But for example's sake, we are going to what program will I use to do that? This well, is actually done is with the Smart Notebook software. There is an, a little option, which I can show you, that um, it looks like a little video camera, and it'll screen cast. That's what this is called. Yeah. Where it just records all you need is microphone. And our computers have microphones. Same thing with positive or negative three. Either way, I will the kids like this because they can pause. I'm also going to put in zero. And because when I put in zero, they had their notes after that. So, so you still do not know the classroom models. How do you make the uh, how do you make this uh, yeah, I'm gonna, how do you make that video? Yeah. Is that a it's just a program? Asking? Yeah. A screencasting program that just records. So you're not sitting there filming your no, that's not me. That is the computer filming what's occurring on the screen. <coughs> you just upload it to the and then I upload it to YouTube. So no. It takes maybe sometimes I'll try to upload five videos at once and it takes them two minutes. Two minutes. So we can keep watching this if you want. I know it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um you have to have a YouTube account, I guess, to post to it. If you want to post to YouTube, you have to make an account. If you have a Gmail, then you technically already have a, a YouTube account because they're all Gmail and Google Plus and all that stuff. It's all interconnected. Um, but for those of you, oh, Smart Notebook always takes forever to open. Okay, well, while that's opening, um, so the kids would watch that video. Is that and they, just, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is that, does that come with the Smart Board? You have that. Yeah, we all have that. You all have it already. And that's why. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what we use every day to do our notes. But you don't have to have the smart board. You don't have to have a smart board to do this. Like if you just have the software, you can do it. I have mine installed on my little toolbar because I use it all the time. But if you can't find it, it looks like a little video camera. Does it record your voice too? You have to have a microphone. And my laptop has one built in. But if you double click on the bottom toolbar, you just gotta look in here until you find it. And it looks like a little video camera. The library has the library has three of them. The like the headsets that have microphones, you just plug them to your computer. Oh cool. Yeah. And the so, so when you're doing yeah, this, can you write up on right the actual smart board, mm -hmm. or do I have to use my mouse to tell the No, you can use your smart board. So if we wanted to make one really quick. Like see slow in the morning. Like this. So it's gonna pop up this little guy in the corner. And this is the smart recorder. And so I hit record. I might be too far away from my microphone to pick up the sound. But I hit record and I say, okay, we're studying section 4.2, you know, and it's about stuff. <laughs> and we're learning all kinds of really great things. And whatever, this is a super exciting video. Whenever I'm done, I just hit stop. And then I save it. You have to save it as anything special for it to work with YouTube? Nope. Whatever you want. And it saves it automatically as a Windows Media file. Which works. Which works with YouTube. And most kids have Windows computers, so my kids who don't have internet access at home, I'll put the video on a flash drive for them and they can watch it at home that way. Our library has also started um, opening up 
staying open later on like Tuesdays and Thursdays so the kids could go to the library and do it then. Um, and then, if you want to check your work, which I never do, and my kids often point out to me that I make mistakes. I make algebra mistakes, and I'm like, you know, life's not perfect. Oh, I did pick it up, sort of. And that's the video we just made. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how do you do that? You do some of your notes at home, and they have to do at home, and then do you still have lecture during the class? <laughs> we'll do about 15 to 20 minutes of lecture, and then the rest of the time is usually there to work, or maybe we have an activity, or you know, a group project or a group assignment or something like that. Because the real thing, especially with your kids who, who you know, where math is really hard for them, is they're good, they do a lot better if they can talk to somebody about it. Well, when they're sitting at home by themselves doing their homework, they don't have anybody to talk to about it. Unless they're gonna talk to their mom who doesn't know anything about free calculus or geometry or whatever they're taking. So I feel like them being able to work in class is a lot more valuable, and they can ask me for help. Like how many times has a kid, maybe they're just feeding you an excuse or whatever, but they come to class and like, I didn't know how to do anything when I got home. I'm like, oh, really? You didn't know how to do anything. So they have nothing done, so now they're behind. So, the so how do you choose what you do at home and note-wise and what you do in your class note-wise? Again, I usually try to keep the more the vocabulary stuff, the definition stuff, um, any of any stuff that I think that they maybe they could have gotten from a book, or stuff that they could maybe figure out on their own, like something kind of simple. I don't want to try to teach them how to do word problems in a video because I feel like I need their attention. I need them to be focused on me when they're doing when we're doing that kind of stuff. What's your YouTube channel? Channel. Um, this is Lady Nate Connor. She makes half. And she makes what? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't think that's me. Um, it would be. <laughs> um, that was the lunch discussion we were going to have later. Oh, yeah. That's not why I got fired. <laughs> um, but the I, ha I made a, a different one for each class. So uh, the pre-calculus one is WHS geometry, I think, or no, that doesn't make sense. WHS pre-calculus. I have like four YouTube channels. WHS pre-calculus, that's, that's this YouTube channel. And then there's WHS geometry, and then there's Courtney O'Connor, which has nothing in it. You know, if, <laughs> if that is your bliss, then by all means. So okay. you do mostly definitions and vocab and very simple, like... Simple examples. So simple examples. this is one that's filled in. So this was the notes that we just watched a little bit of. So, you know, when I get to class, I'll, I'll go, I'll walk around, and while they're checking their homework answers or whatever, I'm checking their notes, and I got a little thing on my phone that I just check stuff off so the kids think I'm really cool because I'm always on my phone, too. But I tell them that I'm using for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. So this will be me in class. And so your video last night was all about graphs of functions. And in the video, we graphed a parabola. Now we can graph all kinds of other things by plotting points. You know, hey, so-and-so back in the back. What's another function that you've graphed before? Hey, you, how do you graph a line? Whatever. And then the graphing calculator part in the video. So all that stuff that I just skipped is stuff that I did not put in the video because I want to talk about that with them. So in the video I picked up with the vertical line test. I'm like, have you heard of the vertical line test before? You did that in algebra too, right? So you know what it is. What does it tell you? And some kid will invariably tell you, oh, well that tells you if a function is one to one. Well, that's wrong. Sorry, you're incorrect. It just tells you if a graph is a function. And why do we draw vertical lines? What's the point of the vertical lines? And they'll be like, hmm. I'll be like, okay, talk to somebody around you. Why do you think we draw vertical lines? as opposed to horizontal lines. And because each input only has to have one output and all that kind of fun stuff. Again. And they like it because they can talk to each other. 
And so I did a couple examples in the video about vertical line tests, yes and no. So and so, go up on the board and draw me one that'll pass. You go up on the board and draw me one that won't pass. You know, make up a problem for somebody next to you to try to do and see if they can figure it out. So after the homework, you kind of do, you do like a synopsis of what the video they watched at home was about? Really, really fast, like two to three minutes. And there will be the kid in the back of the room who has not watched the video who's like, uh, can you go back? And I'm like, no. You were supposed to do that last night. And then they get all mad at me. And I'm like, well, not my problem. NMP, not my problem. That's what I always say. And I'm sure they probably hate me for talking like that, but that's okay. I have to do some things to entertain myself. Um, so then we talked about is y a function of x? And so this was an example from the video. And I popped in a couple more that I want to do with them in class. So I'm not even going to go over that example, because I did that example in the video. But I'm going to go through these two with them. And because they did that example, I don't have to sit here and be like, well, to tell this is a function, the first thing I have to do is get y by itself. I can just be like, what did we do in the one in the video? Well, we got y by itself. So what do you think we have to do here? Get y by itself. And so I get a lot more participation than I ever did before. It's not a lot of me just up here yapping and blabbing. It's them telling me what they learned. And it's them feeling a lot more confident because they know what they're going to learn when they come to class that day. Which is something that kids never get in math class. Like how many kids in math class feel like they know what's going to happen when the day occurs? And so then, I decided the piecewise functions were too hard to do in the video, or too mind-boggling to do in the video, so I'm going to go through this whole example of the piecewise function with them together. And so they'll be writing that down, and they'll be adding that to their notes. So you have a lot more time to do the hard stuff. A lot more time to do the hard stuff in class. And then again, you know, we're down, we're maybe 30 minutes into class, so they've got 20 minutes to where here's your assignment, I'm walking around and I'm checking them, you know. I'll say, hey, well, you got problem number three done, let me know so I can check to make sure you're doing it right. I get a lot more interactions with kids that I never got before, you know. I know all about the super exciting things that are happening in their life because I have time to talk to them. Which, teaching math, I never had that. Like, especially in my old school, I couldn't tell you half the kids' names that I taught because I was so busy trying to get all the math done that I didn't get to make that personal connection that all you English teachers and social studies teachers and stuff get to do all the time because you do all that lovey-dovey stuff. We don't do that in math class, so, so we're all business around here. And, and the kids feel like I'm more approachable now, maybe more so than I was before. And speaking of kids, our school newspaper at the end of last year did a little editorial piece of for and against for flipped classrooms. I won't tell you which one was mine did, because that makes the other person look really bad. Um, but I was going to go ahead and give this to you just to kind of check out, to really see how the kids feel. One girl is really mad about a flipped classroom. The other girl says she doesn't like it, but understands why it's good for her. So I guess neither one of them are ranting and raving about how wonderful it is. What was the issue with the girl that didn't like it without? Just, they have to do without? <laughs> oh, she talks all about it. Trust me, she is mad. The girl, it's front and back. So the one that the person, oh, you know the one. The one that. Kelly um, must be here since it talks about it. Yeah, it talks about math. The other one was chemistry, so that kind of gives it away. Uh, but the girl who liked it didn't sell it as well as the girl who didn't like it, whose article is like twice as long. <laughs> but, um, but I thought this was really cool because, you know, it really gives you a student-to-student -student perspective and it kind of gives you an idea of how to do it wrong, <laughs> maybe a little bit, without throwing one of my colleagues kind of under the bus. Um, you know, the, the girl who doesn't like it goes into a lot of um, stuff about how she doesn't feel like her teacher's teaching her because all she does is watch videos. And to an extent, the way this particular teacher was doing it, and she has since changed when she kind of read this article and she got her AP scores back and they weren't really great, um, that she's kind of since changed how she's done things. And it is all about learning from your mistakes. Like my first video was 35 minutes long and that was a train wreck and, and parents emailing me and calling me telling me I wasn't teaching their kids, which was 
Not true, because I was. It was me on the video, but they just didn't like it. So how about how do you keep your videos to like eight minutes a month, ten minutes a month? Try to keep it under ten. Because I kind of was thinking to myself, like, what if every core teacher did that? And every core teacher gave their kid a 40-minute video to watch. You know, it's like you're being back at school for the whole day, and that's not the point. You know, the point is to enhance your classroom. And I feel like if you do everything at home, then what are you, you know, classroom is, the classroom is more than just trying to work on your homework. You want to be able to instruct them. You want to be able to, that fellow's really important. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> uh, you want to be. That, I think I just figured out. <laughs> you can call Frank Wood and tell him that you that I did the terrible job. Mm -hmm. yeah, he doesn't take my phone. Oh, well, he doesn't take mine either, so it's alright. Um, no, he's gonna try. Um, you try to keep it under ten minutes a night, but you do want every single line. Pretty much. You know, just depending on where we are. You know, maybe today is the day to get caught up on your homework. And the only thing that I expect them to have done every single day is watch that video. So if they don't, if they don't get their homework all the way done, for my honors kids especially, I'm like, you are responsible enough to find the time when you're going to finish it. I wrote the answers up on the board. Take a picture with your phone. Finish it when you get a chance. They turn it in the day they, they turn in all their assignments, their book work, on the day they take the test. And so that's how I do my honors. Yeah, for completion, not for accuracy. We'll do different stuff like quizzes and things like that for accuracy things. Uh, but, you know, I did this with my geometry concepts kids. So we're talking kids who don't show up at school half the time, kids who have made some interesting choices in their life, in their very short little life. Um, and with them, they did it all in class. Like, I booked the laptop cart for three weeks straight, and everybody was so ticked at me. But I didn't really care because I wanted to see if it would work with them. And it really worked well. Like I made all the videos up front and then what I did with them is they had, I guess you could call it like a quiz. We did like some online quizzing and things that I made where they watched the video, they took notes on the video, I checked their notes and then I gave them an assignment to do and they had to get the assignment like 70% correct before I would let them move on to the next video. Does that make sense? So they didn't do it at home, they just did it in class but it was on your own time. So yes. you had some people like on the fourth video and, and some people who were done. And so the kids who got done early, I gave them like a cool project that they got to do. And the kids who still hadn't gotten done, I gave them a deadline, they didn't finish, they had to take their test anyway. Because they had all the information. They could have done it at home. But with those lower level kids, I'm lucky if I get a worksheet back a month later. Like, you know, especially with mine, I have the uh, interesting group of kids. So how does this work? guys teach 80 minutes mm -hmm. so class and a half is basically they see three three times a week then two times a week <coughs> okay so is there, have you heard of how people are setting that up on the block with their on videos the, I, I mean i know 10 minute video but if you're only going to see them three times a week maybe make the video a little bit longer or maybe because my husband does this too he teaches in rockwood he copied off me <laughs> um and he teaches sometimes on a block and sometimes it's really great what they do. Um, but he'll do it to where if his kids have a block, maybe he hasn't watched two videos, two 10 minute videos about two different things, which I don't know if I necessarily like that very much, just depending on what the subject matter is. Um, or I have seen people do it to where their entire lecture is on the computer. And I personally don't like that for me, just because I wanna be able to instruct them. And I, again, I want to be able to, I don't want to overwhelm their life with video, you know? Like, I feel like if I were to give them a 35 minute video to watch every single night, I don't think that's in their best interest. So maybe you could up it to, you know, 15, or maybe you could even have them. And YouTube only lets you make 15 minute videos too. Yeah, you have to have some kind have of like premium account, account yeah. or something like that to be able to do more than 15. Yeah. Um, although it has let me upload longer ones before. Sometimes I'll record like the lecture that we do in class and I'll post that up for kids who are absent. And those are usually more than 15 minutes. Um, 
But yeah, I like the 10 minute, I, I, I kind of stick to my guns about, you know, the 10 minute thing because did anybody see that study about the goldfish and how like a goldfish has a higher attention span or has a longer attention span than a teenager? <laughs> like a goldfish has like three seconds and a teenager has like two and a half or something like that. I believe it, mm -hmm. but I was kind of surprised. Um, so I like the 10 minute thing, but again, that could free up the time that you have to do in class. The kids could work on assignments, kids could do different kinds of activities. Um, you could dive into all that common core stuff that everybody loves so much. You know, if we get to do the basic stuff at home, then that frees up more time for you to do more complex things. Or maybe you structure it to where you got a 10 minute video you got 20 minutes in class, maybe 20 minutes to work on your assignment, and then maybe you move on to the next thing at the end of class, or the beginning of the next thing. Again, it's different for everybody. I can't tell you that this is the way to do it because everybody's different, and every class is different, every kid is different. So, just like the kid in the newspaper article, he hated this so much, it wasn't even, like I felt awkward reading it. I was like, oh. <laughs> but, um, but again, you, you kind of have to think about it in terms of your spectrum and what you're trying to accomplish. So there isn't really a right or wrong answer to that question. Is Owen still on the block? Sure. I remember they were They didn't mind. I was saying the modified block now. Oh yeah. I'm not for sure though. But I know they were talking about, because I was talking to science teachers there, they do like their 10 minute video tonight. And they come in and they do some refreshers and finishing up with notes and then they had, they put up their lab tables which I don't know if it would work for somebody else but like they had different activities they had to complete for each lab table and that's what Ole talked about she does that this year about the video part but so like they had to come in and do something with the knowledge they got from the video and then 20 minutes they switched to a different lab table so like stations yeah yeah and that's kind of cool too my time. my lower level kids kind of like that because they don't have to sit still <laughs> From, from spot to spot to spot. So they like that one. And especially for them, they really like it because, you know, if there's one thing that they're struggling at, they only have to focus on one thing at a time. As opposed to like, here's everything that we talked about. Here's a worksheet that covers everything. The focus is better. And especially with those kids, you gotta, you have to get them to focus on one thing at a time. So then how do you make it work? you have to somehow make it essential to what you're doing. If there's a video online, but it doesn't really matter if the kids watch it, they're not, <laughs> they don't it. have the intrinsic ability to realize that I should watch this because it's good for me. Uh, maybe your, your kids in, you know, freak out and calf might get there eventually, but my kids in the beginning of this year, it was like pulling teeth to get them to try to watch a 10 minute video. Um, so whether you check it for points or whether you give them a notes quiz, when they come into class that day. Like the first thing you have is a quiz over the video. You know, what is this definition? What is this definition? Maybe even let them use their notes. I've done that before where I've given them a quiz when they walk in the door and they're allowed to use their notes from their video if they took notes, you know, and maybe I'll give each kid a different one or something like that so they don't cheat off each other. But that way you know whether or not they watch it and you make it so they realize that it's important to you that you do. Um, again, check to make sure they do it. They don't. Unfortunately, they just don't care about the subject that I teach. They don't. As much as I would love for them to all become little mathematicians, it's just not going to work for them. Um, and then the big thing is that if you are making an instructional video, you know, if I'm from science class and maybe I want the kids to watch, you know, some experiment or something that somebody did, you know, that video you don't necessarily have to make yourself. But if you are making an instructional video, I feel like it is so important for you to make it yourself. There are tons of videos on the internet that you can go and find and make your kids watch it. And that's good and I've done that, you know, if I'm sick or something one day and I don't want them to fall behind. I'll give the sub the link to the video and the sub will play the video because I'm, you know, thrown up in the toilet. I don't want to try to make a video for my kids that morning. I get that. But if you are trying to, if you are trying to instruct your kids, I think that it's important that you make the video. And that's kind of the problem that the girl in this article came across is that this teacher wasn't making the videos herself. She wasn't, so, and sometimes, kind of seemed like to the kid, I don't know if it's true, but it kind of seemed like she hadn't even watched them. Like she had just given them this video to watch, 
in hopes that they were going to learn, and then she would keep telling them to go back and watch the video, watch the video, watch the video. And that, like, stabs me in the heart a little bit. But um, if you make it yourself, then you have the power to say when a parent comes to you and says, gets all mad about whatever, you have the power to say, I made this video, I am teaching them, I'm just doing it in a different way. It's okay. Don't freak out. You know, it's an adjustment. And then that 10 minutes or less thing I think is really important. I had so many parents send me emails about concerns about this process. And I was like, it's an adjustment. It is not going to go well the first time you do it. It's not going to go well the first week you do it. It takes training. You have to condition the kids as to how you want them to do this. And then you get to condition the parents, the parent-teacher conferences, when they come in and say, you're not teaching my kid. This doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, well, it's not really about you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. They don't really like that very much. But um, that's where, if you have you know, supportive administrators who are supportive, who, who want this to happen, which it feels like they are, then you can just send them off to the principals. And you can just do your own thing. Because <laughs> that's what I did. And it was really funny. The first parent who ever complained about how I wasn't teaching her daughter and she's going to fail the ACT and she's going to, why doesn't she just sign, them up, sign her up for online courses if I'm just going to do this stuff? And my principal was very good at calling them, and they came in at parent-teacher conferences ready to punch me in the face. It was really weird because the guy was in a wheelchair, so it was a guy in a wheelchair screaming at me. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but it was at the end of the year, it was very satisfying because the mom sends me an email thanking me for what I did for her kid, and that she was sorry that they were very upset at the beginning, but that their daughter eventually got used to it and eventually realized, and eventually liked it. And that girl, at the end of the semester, was like, are there any more videos about this stuff that I can watch? And I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so you will get complaints, and you will get resistance from the kids. So you have to kind of, I don't know if shaming them is the right word, into watching the video. But um, I have in the past had kids like, oh, you didn't watch your video last night? I'm sorry. You get to stay after school for detention and watch your video in detention because you couldn't be bothered to spend 10 minutes at home. I'm very sarcastic with them. Like, I would say that to them just like that. They don't like that very much, but they don't like a lot of the things that I do. So I'm like, yeah, um, you are going to come against roadblocks. You are going to come against things that you're just, it's going to make you want to give up, but you feel like you have to stick to your guns. I feel like if if you do it and you believe in it and you sell it and you get all excited about it, the kids are going to feel like that too. And the kids are going to, I had a kid the other day who was, who told me that she really liked the video, but she really hated that she had to watch it at home. I'm like, what? okay. I'm like, how would you like to solve that problem? She's like, I don't know. I just wanted to express my feelings. I was like, all right, that's great. Like, you got a video to watch at home tonight. <laughs> and I have some kids who really just prefer to do their homework at home, who like to do it in a quiet environment. So they'll sit there on their phones when we have work time, and they'll be watching their video then. So there's always that kind of balance. And every kid is different. You're never going to find a teaching method that is going to work for every kid. So ever. So watching it in class, do they have headphones? Or do they, yeah. I bought a bunch of headphones from the dollar store. Okay. They don't work really well. The kids complain. I tell them to bring their own. <laughs> that beggars can't be choosers. Um, um, yeah, and watch them all walk out of the room. First time I bought earbuds, I only have one pair of earbuds left. And then I was like, eh, they even swipe the crappy earbuds, all right. So then I bought the, the old school ones that are like the wire, and they got the things here. <laughs> They're, those are probably a lot cleaner. I was like, I'm not using these headphones. They've been in your ears. But kids share them all the time, so I guess they don't really care that much. Um, kids not watching the videos, everybody asks me about that. And every single one of these things I do, they're like, what if they don't watch the video? And I think that you kind of have a discipline system already set up in your classroom. If a kid doesn't do their homework, what do you do to them? You know, it's the same, con it's the same consequence because that's their homework. That's what they're supposed to be doing at home. So if they don't do it, you know, with me, with my honors kids, I'm like, you kind of screwed yourself, kid. Sorry. Uh, what are you going to do to solve your problem for the future? 
With my lower level kids, it's you got a detention. That's not fair, not, not my problem, don't care. Like you chose not to do your work. Or maybe I have a super cool something fun to do that day, but the kid who didn't watch their video doesn't get to do it. They gotta sit in the back of the room in the corner and watch the video because they didn't come prepared to class. And so if you have those structures in place, then you know what to do if a kid doesn't watch a video. Um, there's always gonna be tech issues, always. And you gotta roll with those punches. YouTube's gonna go down sometimes, and that's okay. There will be five kids who come in with a picture, with a screenshot of the YouTube saying, this video cannot be displayed. And they'll say, what do I do? And I'll say, we'll deal with that problem later. And then you can freak out when they're not around and figure out what you wanna do for the day. Um, just don't let the kids know that you're having tech issues. Because if they see you freaking out about it, then they're gonna shut down. Oh, and then another thing with the parents. I had one parent who came to yell at me at pajama day, so I was in my pajamas. <laughs> and so that was embarrassing enough. But her kid was one of my special kids who just didn't do anything. And she's like, I don't agree with the way you teach. I'm like, okay, cool. She's like, and I told my son that. And I was like, and that's why your son is not passing my class because your attitude is affecting how your son is behaving. She didn't like that I told her that and then told the principal and then the principal told her the same thing. So we have that supportive system <laughs> at our school. Um, but yeah, pajama day didn't really go well for me. That day. And she came storming in, ready to, for a fight. And I'm just like, I got better things to do than deal with these problems. And that's the thing that you kind of have to have to realize is pick and choose your battles. You know, if you have a parent who's adamantly defiant about their kid not watching the video. Be like, okay, well then your kid can come in after school every single day and I will personally teach it to them. They're never gonna do that. They're just gonna watch the stupid video. You know, if they follow through with the threat, then you better make that experience very torturous so they don't come back again. <laughs> um, but the parents, once they realize, and I have some parents who are like, I watched it too. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm proud of you. Like, when you want me to give you a grade? I can give you points too. <laughs> I'm like, but the kid, like, the parents will eventually come around. Parents who are afraid of technology won't like it. And there are people like that. And that's okay. You don't have to please everybody. If you're not ticking somebody off, I feel like you're not doing your job. That's what I always say. <laughs> um, and then you have to make sure that you're super organized with the videos. Like, you have to say, I want you to watch this video tonight. Or, when I was first doing it, I uploaded the videos one at a time because I want you to watch the new video that's on the YouTube channel, not the video that I want you to watch three days from now. Like you have to make sure that whatever you do, it's very super obvious to the kids which video you're supposed to watch and when they're supposed to watch it. Now we have a learning management system. Do you know what a learning management system is? It's like Moodle. Moodle is a learning management system. It's just a way for you to for you to send information out to your kids, and I can show you ours. Ours is called Schoology. I like it and I don't like it. Again, you're never gonna please everybody, right? But um, Schoology, I don't like it because it looks like Facebook. <laughs> um, and actually, if you want, you can make your own personal accounts for your kids. Your school doesn't have to have like a big giant account for everybody. Um, Trying to impress you all with my fast typing skills. Let me mess it up. Okay. So is Google Classroom like Schoology? Google Classroom is another way. <laughs> Google Classroom is another way of really just organizing. I forgot the. I spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Google Classroom is another way, and my husband has experimented a little bit with Google Classroom. I personally have not, because we have this, so I haven't really messed around with it very much. I hear it's pretty cool, and I. When we were going through the whole process of picking a learning management system, I was, of course, on that committee because I'm the techie person. Um, and I said we should just go Google school and be done with it. But So everybody wanted something where they could organize all their information. Um, so this is what school as you look like. Again, it kind of looks like Facebook. And that's what I don't really like about it. I don't really like how the place where the kids play looks the same as the place where they're supposed to learn. But that apparently doesn't bother as many people as it does me. So I've gotten over it. Um, so let me show you. I'm sure you don't want to see the stuff that my programming kids are doing while I'm gone. I'm sure they don't want to see the stuff. Oh, I guess I can say real quick. So with Schoology, 
you can organize everything into folders. So I have all the different chapters and different resources. You know, we have online links that they can do. Uh, but here's the unit we're in right now, polynomial or rational functions. These are all the videos that they have watched. So, um, and this is nice because I can upload a bunch at a time and the due date is right there. And I have never used the same video more than once. In the three years that I've been doing this, I have never used the same video twice. I have always, because maybe I'm just a perfectionist or OCD or something like that, I just, I feel like if I make them new every year, then it's starting fresh every year. But maybe this year, year three, maybe I have perfected it and I can use them all again. Although, there are outcome mistakes. So the kids, for today's class period, were supposed to watch this video. And they all had their own login, and Schoology has an app and all that stuff. So they can get to this stuff really easily. And so this is a great way for us to organize it. But if you, know, you don't have this right now, you're in the process of finding it. So just making a YouTube channel is really easy. And the kids can subscribe to your YouTube channel. And then it sends them updates, it sends them emails, whenever you load something up. So, and then you write it really big on your board somewhere, write, vi watch video 3.6 part two tonight, or get it attention, or you know, or else, or something like that, because that's how I am. And they know that they have to watch it, and they know where to go. You gotta show them where to go a couple times. You have to lead that horse to water, but, once they get the hang of it, it's fine. Now then that new kid transfers into your class and then you gotta do it all over again. But, um, but this is how I organize mine. And don't make the same mistake that I did. This year I decided since we had this really cool system, oh, I'm just gonna give them an online quiz every single video. Well, then they weren't watching the videos, they were just taking the online quizzes. I don't know why I thought that, that would work and why I thought that they would be like better people and not cheat off each other. But, but I did. You know, I thought, I was, I thought that they would, they would embrace it. No, I had to ditch the online quizzes and go back to checking their notes, which works a lot better. I have found. So that's the video they have to watch. Yep. And actually, have to go to YouTube and no, YouTube. it's in YouTube, um, but it's embedded in the website, so they really only have to go to one place, which is nice. So on Schoology, they have. You can embed videos, so you don't have to go there. So you have to upload it to YouTube first, then you have to embed it? Yeah. That's how I do it. I could just stick a link in here. It's not, it's easy. It's really not hard. YouTube, and YouTube allows you to easily embed things into anywhere you go. It's kind of designed that way. What is, this is not? This is Schoology. This is Schoology. It's not connected to the any other ones you just showed us? No. This is, is your district got you this. Our district. I don't know if we pay for this or not. I don't remember. Because there is a free version and there's a paid version. I can't remember. Like Moodle is one of those things that were totally free, which I'm gonna give you my bias on Moodle. We used to have Moodle and I hated every second of it. But you be your own judge. I like this a lot better. Um, because it allows you to do all this embedding stuff that Moodle hadn't quite gotten to that technology yet. So maybe it has. But we got rid of Moodle at the end of last year after we revolted and said, pay for something, we need something better. Um, so we might pay for this, I don't remember. And it's not my job to know that stuff. Um, but this is for all their classes. So whenever a kid logs in here, you see all the classes that I'm in charge of, which seems like a lot. But um, the, when a kid is in this, they will see all of their classes. And they will, um, they go to their home screen, any assignments that they have do show up over here. So it's very, very obvious to them what they have to do. So their assignments are on the computer or they have paper and pencil assignments? My kids, depending on what we're doing, my concepts kids, when we were doing our flipped classroom, all of their assignments were online because it instantly graded it. And so the kids could see, oh, I got three out of 20 right. I probably need to do this again. And I was constantly checking them and working with them to get them to the level they needed to be. So do you, it says here you can, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but it's, it talks to uh, SIS and Zoom and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you take the grades they get off there. And pour them into your grade book. And it just shows up in your grade book. Yeah, that is like an IT thing that they have to do. Well, yeah, but that's, that means you guys pay for yeah, although Lumen won't let us port anything in because Lumen wants us to use their stuff. 
which their stuff wasn't really great either. Uh, how much of this stuff, like, do you use a calendar? The calendar, <laughs> yes. yeah. not so much. I haven't played, I, I know other teachers who have, um, but it's just a way for you to kind of say what we're doing. Well, I guess it automatically pops stuff up, but if this was a kid, they would see all of their teacher stuff. Okay, what about the, do you use any of the messaging that goes with it? A couple kids have sent me messages. This is me testing the messaging, sending to somebody else. But um, this was a girl who was like, Miss O'Connor, you forgot to post our assignment up. The one kid who tells you, you forgot to give us our assignment. Um, this was Emily. And, uh, she was confused about something, but we have, you know, all the kids have district emails, so they'll communicate with that, us that way as opposed to this. But we could do it this way, and that would actually be kind of great. Again, if, it, if everything was in one place, how great would it be? Um, there's actually also something really cool in here. Oh, this also links with uh, Google Drive and Khan Academy, and like it all, Schoology has a lot of different arrangements for everybody else. Um, I like the Schoology gradebook better than our online gradebook a little bit because it just, it's a lot easier to work with. Our gradebook, you can't use the arrow keys. You have to physically click the next box. It's very unpleasant. Um, but, again, I'm not really here to talk to you about Schoology, but I do like it. Um, and it comes in handy. Yeah. So your homework, where do you make it? Um, for these kids, I'll do, for my pre-calc kids, it's, they'll have assignments from the book. We just got a brand new textbook series. I did, well, last year when I was a pilot teacher, meaning that I was one of the seven people who just got thrown to the wind and said, hey, go try a bunch of stuff, and we'll try to train you as best as we can. Um, for my, that year I taught honors geometry, and our textbooks were so old and so falling apart that I didn't bother passing them out, and actually made an online textbook with videos in it. And so I had my honors geometry kids every night read their online textbook with the little videos in it, which is just another version of a flipped classroom. The one thing that I think the flipped classroom lacks is that it takes out that reading component. You know? Like if I wanted my kids to read this section in their textbook and try to see if they could understand, that's gone. Like they're not learning how to read a textbook. And that would be the one thing that I would say is kind of lacking with the flipped classroom is that they don't know how to read a textbook anymore because they're expecting to see a video and, and that kind of stuff. So I think the gains are far better than trying to have them read their textbook. And I know there are still teachers who say, read your textbook and, and take notes from your textbook. But the textbook isn't written for them to read. It's not written to their reading level. It's definitely not written for my concepts kids' reading level. Like some of them can't even read at a fifth grade level and they're juniors in high school. So. There are fallbacks, there are, it's not perfect, nothing's perfect, and I like it, and I think that you could try it tomorrow. It's one of those things where you don't have to spend all this time trying to set it up. You could do this tomorrow. You could, you know, if you had any work time today, which I'm sure you probably don't, because our PD days are always packed full of stuff, just like it appears yours are. <laughs> um, but you could go, and you, the next time you're sick, Instead of just giving the kids some kind of review, something or whatever to do, because you're not here, make a video. Or maybe you're sick. Um, you're taking a mental health day. Um, make a video. Have the sub play it. Hopefully the sub is capable of playing a video off of YouTube. If not, one of the kids will be able to tell you. And, um, and have the kids take notes on it. The next day you take a test. Instead of giving them a worksheet or something when they get done, Give them a piece of paper with the website of the video that you make and then tell them their homework tonight is to watch this video and take notes. Half of them probably won't do it, but the half that do are gonna be like, hey, this is really cool. And they're gonna sell it for you. And again, there are gonna be kids who have obstacles. There are kids who don't have internet access, who don't, who don't have a computer, who don't have a phone. And there are ways around that. You know, they can get here whatever time you let them in the door. And they could come in here. I had kids come to school and just sit here in the morning and watch their video and take notes. And they went on with life. Again, if it's only 10 minutes, you still have plenty of time to be the little social butterflies. But yeah, that's what I do, and I like it. And it's not perfect, but 
It works for me and it works for my kids. And I'll answer any other questions, but I can tell you're getting kind of antsy and you want to walk around. So. <laughs> when you were checking um, notes and you were saying you were just checking it off on your phone, were you using this program to put in grades or? Um, actually, I just made like a Google Doc and I was just, it's, a little, it's just a little checkbox and I just checked done, not done or really good excuse. Those are the three mm. options that I usually have on mine. <laughs> Hmm. Other questions? What percentage of teachers at Washington are, are going to this route? It's big with our science and our math people. English and social studies not so much because due to the nature of the stuff that they teach, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, I don't feel like there is crunch for time here all the time, you know? They're not trying to cram all this stuff in for the Algebra 1 EOC as we are. You know, I feel like they just get to they get to have all kinds of great class discussions, and we're going to do a project where we make a poster. And I was like, man, I wish I could do a poster. We got to make a poster. We got to do fun stuff. So I always feel kind of jealous of them. But our math people, especially because I'm here, and I'm like, this is really great. You should do this. Like, here, I'll help you. Like, let's do it. Let's try it. Our math people are really getting into it. We got about three or four math teachers who are doing it intermittently. And there's maybe another one all the time. And then our, our curriculum, or our uh, department chair, who's been teaching for like a million years, like 40 something years, it's like, oh my gosh, guy. She's like, if I was a young person, I would do this too. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Connie. <laughs> She's like, this is the wave of the future. I'm like, I'm glad you believe in it, Connie. I'll probably fall over dead if Connie ever tries to make a video. But um, a lot of times we'll work together. Like, you know, me and the girl, the other girl who teaches geometry concepts will, you know, she'll make half and I'll make half. So it allows you to collaborate. And, and that's the best part about it, is that you can work with people around you to really find the best way that it works for you. Science people like it too. But again, science people make the videos way too long. I'm just like, it's not my job to tell them to put them at all. That's somebody else's job. <laughs> All right, you guys need to go walk around. If you want to ask me questions, find me at lunch. <laughs>